All right, so this is the truck engine with those truck engines. They have that very low hanging oil pan. They have that intake that's plastic, which I actually like in this case, that 102 that you can probably see in frame over there on that. It looks super cool, but uh, the fuel pressure regulator is built into the truck intake on these, so it's pretty slick. You just run a, run a feed, run a return, and I have it right here. I just adapted dash 6AN to the uh, little pressure, pressure lock fittings, whatever they're called and it worked pretty slick, but that thing looks really cool. So I wanna run that intake on this engine. I got a new oil pan, as I said, and then this accessory drive, you can see all the truck stuff's off of it. Um, what I want is at least uh, power steering. I don't really need air conditioning right now. So I'm gonna run the Camaro F body 98 to 02 oil, I mean, power steering pump. I'm gonna relocate the alternator from where it is normally here to elsewhere. Uh, I wanna run the this crank pulley just cause I already have it. So I looked around online and found a kit that'll allow you to adapt it. And I got it and it's in now. So what I'm gonna do is do the oil pan and then do the accessories. And if I have time, do the intake. So I'll get started. So here's how the oil pan looks out of the box. It's your good old eBay special, and you guys can hold off on the, it's gonna cause a problem down the road. You can just say I told you so when it breaks down. I think there'll be a better way to manage this. So nice, I don't know if it's a Holly knockoff or if it's a Camaro 98 to 02, as I was saying, LS1 style. Um, I know there's like a, there's two different variants. I can throw on what this one is, cause I know there's like a, there's a dash number after it that dictates kind of, if it is a full round here or if it kind of has a step round here so if this ends up working you'll be able to kind of reverse engineer it because i i'll throw the part number up and you can just see how much that's going to save it really only comes down to like right there so you can see i've probably got an oil leak on here so i'm going to drain the oil uh clean the mating surface get the everything switched over and fill it back up again. go that's the response I was thinking was gonna happen Not no longer just hand tight. Okay. There we go. Nice. Get this guy out of here. Smells like fuel. do different oil pickup but I think that's about it all right so I got all the parts here oil pickup here and if I remember correctly one bolt up here and then another one for the support bracket maybe another third one in there but should be a simple swap
there we go. Put this right here so don't forget how it's set. Set in there, grab another one. This one, interestingly, looks like it goes to two in this flange area. Do I have, okay, so there's a hole there. Interesting. The other one just doesn't use it? Hmm. So I think I got that all straightened out. So I got an O-ring back on this guy, flange, and then now they switch to these bolts instead, which the quality of this is definitely lower, but uh, our budget's low too, so everything's making sense still. Hey guys, after much suffering, the solution was I'd just use one of these guys to get the right angle. My uh, tool on here, this little ridge was hitting, so it made it a little complicated, but now you can see it still moves around a bit, and these guys are pretty snug. So, I know the engine had oil pressure before, and the only thing we were changing on the bottom end is this, so if we don't have oil pressure after, after then I guess we did something wrong. pretty solid down here all right okay so I don't know if I have a bolt hole missing or not but when I hold this guy up you can see there's a uh, nothing there I think that's okay I'm just keep moving I think that's probably common a lot of these have extra bolts Down. All right, so I have one bolt left over, and that makes sense because we didn't run that one. I'm either I'm either a goofball or that's entirely okay. same size. I don't believe is the pan the same size? Why am I having this issue? You should you should be fine. Nothing's changing here man. Yeah there might be some crud in the threads maybe. I just think maybe that long shaft is uh, causing it to yeah that was it. There was some crud in the threads. And that long shaft was taking up the, the ratchet mechanism. Okay. Or it's a giant problem that'll come back to haunt us. My next question is, what's going on here? What is this relationship about? Maybe there's something that goes here? Seems like this, and then those yellow zincs will do it. And they even gave us a drain bolt. How nice. Which way we think? This way? Why not? Ooh, 
agora. Maybe that's upside down. Maybe it's not. Tab helps you remove it. Or the tab goes up here. Who knows? Is there, I still can't believe there's not a hole here. Is there really not a hole here? Right, there isn't. Okay. Drain bolt. Always impact these guys on. First brand new drain bolt. Send that home with a Milwaukee mid torque. Just kidding. Don't do that. That's all right. Okay. Now that it's all dirty, I guess we gotta transfer that oil filter. Cause I'm poor like that. Go get the old oil filter. to damage your Milwaukee do that I just crushed the LED that's funny all right let's not do that again usually I got an extendo on this thing I did try this by hand, so don't make fun of me. Right, let's bring this bad boy and this bad boy on over. All right, I've never done this before. I've never taken an oil filter off and then put it back on again. So I think that seal's probably good. So I don't have to worry about double sealing. Bro, imagine it's a different oil filter the rest of the days from now. Bro, is it? You're joking. It's a different oil filter thread? No. That'd be moronic. No. Keep trying. Am I stupid? But what the hell is unscrewing right now? What is happening? The other one's not like this. It is a different thread. It doesn't thread. What? That's stupid. I'm gonna take the old one off. I see a, I see a hex face on that. I'm gonna get real freaky about it. Shit up as I go along. <laughs> Bro, I should read some forms or something. This shit's impossible just making it up. Okay. Alright, besides the metal debris in there currently, I think we're good. Do you go? All right, we got past the threads we screwed up. Oh, shit. come on, buddy, come on, buddy, come on, buddy. We've got too much oil now. Let's get those last couple threads. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Success. Truck oil filter, F body oil pan. I did all this to avoid having to go get a new oil filter, but you'll have it. Should run.
bad practice likely to use used motor oil in your freshly air quotes rebuilt but you gotta do what you gotta do Dipstick might work still, hopefully, right? I did look and it still is right next to that pickup at the right spot. Okay, we're on the dipstick. It says add. Sick. We're right at the lowest setting right now. All right. Good enough for me. You guys want to come see the particulate? So this is what it looked like over here. That's what I just strained out. Can't imagine what I didn't strain out. But this thing's just got two little filters here. This oil only ran for a couple, honestly, like probably 10 startups. I'm surprised how dark it was. So put it right back in. I was kind of joking about running used motor oil in it, but we technically just did. So, on to the next thing. Man, I sure hope that thing fits in there. But yeah, significantly more clearance right to there. So now I did the unfun job. This was an unfun job for me. Really didn't, uh, didn't like any part of it. But we'll move on to the fun stuff now, which is getting these cool brackets all mounted up. So this one I kind of built already. Had to even kind of press in these little bushings into these bearings. That wasn't too bad, you could do that in a vise. So I'll get these guys mounted up. This is an ICT billet turbo mount. Um, turbo, I mean, I forget exactly what it's called, but it puts the alternator here. Oil, I mean, uh, power steering pump there and then allows you to have clearance for the headers there and there. Because I just wanna not have to buy this kit again. So I'm not gonna go buy a kit and then turbo it and have to buy another kit. So this all works for me, same alternator. It allows you to just use your truck alternator, your truck crank pulley. You do have to get an F-body water pump because the alternator sits right here and your normal water pump comes out the top like that. So that would hit so none of that um same water i mean same loop here just transfer that over from my other one and all these brackets should allow that f body camaro uh that guy that power steering pump to be mounted uh, using all these cool brackets so i'll get to it all right so i'm gonna get started first with this bracket which what this does is this just adds attention or into your loop because you're kind of really messing around with a bunch of stuff here so these are a couple different kits so it's this uh this number the uh the dash three kit and i guess the the engine builder bracket that's that bracket on the back side um the dash three is for the the truck uh pulley the the, the where it's at they have a good graphic on their site but yeah, you can see the dash threes for adapting your truck pulley but yeah, this is basically just a bundle of their kits. You got this kit, which does the F-body power steering pump. This kit, which does the alternator. And then I guess that's that's truly the alternator one. And I guess they got another one that adapted the water pump and the other one that adds an idler. So this was, I think, a combination of three total kits. I can throw up the one I got for this I don't know about the overall quality, obviously, because I'm not running it, but I mean, I am somewhat qualified to talk about this stuff, but I would really want some duration under the belt of this engine before we really get going. So I'll start with that guy and then that bracket and 
let's see where's the other bracket that one that one and that one there we go let's get started really slick looking part This one might need to be started by hand. That doesn't look like that should go in there. That's crazy how big these bolts are. What I've been doing is, it's pretty simple. If you just drop all the countersunk ones in their countersinks, and you can kind of just figure it out from there. It's not too bad. I did follow their instructions to kind of do this because I wanted to mock it up a little bit. So I'm not going in completely blind here. Just because I didn't want to get halfway through this video and then be all pouty because uh, nothing lined up. So this water pump with these spacers, I don't know if I talked about it before or not, but it makes sense spacing the Camaro water pump off like the truck one is. And uh, there's a set screw on that side. I believe it's supposed to be on that side because it doesn't clear the alternator when it's installed. But make sure, make sure you have that set screw on before you uh, go to do this. Otherwise, it certainly sucks to put in. But... This is some pretty complex stuff someone did to get all these to line up. I don't know what you'd use in that set screw. Is that like for a turbo, water-cooled turbo or something? It's over by the wall. It's over, it's over on this side, I think. Or at least maybe it's intended to be. How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Ooh. Oh, you hear someone? Yeah. Hey. Oh, we're trying not to encourage that behavior. Yes, you're a good girl. Just don't eat all the oil. Oh, hey, they don't know. You're good. You don't need to do that. You're good. All right, back to work. All right, so I got that not tightened down. I need to figure out where I was. Ow. when it just bolts together huh this one's a bit complex because we're going into this bracket and the water pump so i'm hoping all my spacers didn't fall out i'll go over all the spacers in a second the l over d ratio on these bolts is nutty so not too concerned about them falling off however they are threaded in aluminum these 
bottom ones and these top ones. I just know enough to be dangerous. Okay, and these all need to be torqued, but I'll go through these spacers because it's kind of wild. So you got a spacer for the water pump here to go F body water pump, truck alternator, and then this to go all the way from the front of that to the back of that. And then you also have a spacer, same side here, same side here. I mean, I can't complain, it's pretty solid. Last thing to do is that uh, power steering pump. Man, I always forget what that thing's called. Okay, so, well, so one thing did happen to me when I was ordering this power steering pump. I ordered a power steering pump just thinking they were all the same, like a 9802. Um, this one was threaded in these two holes here. So these through bolts couldn't go through these two side ones. I don't know what's up with that. Um, however, I do know how to use a drill. So I just drilled those holes out. Uh, wasn't bad. Some pretty crappy pop metal aluminum, which is a concern for a later date. But now they drop right through like you, like you just saw. Interesting stuff. I don't know if that's a reason. Perhaps someone can drop a comment. A respectful criticism. Constructive criticism, maybe. Or you can just start dogging on me. I don't care. kind of powered through something don't know what okay pretty solid stuff last walk around before i try to get this all lined up look at that that is looking good what are you eating you're eating a oh sylvie what are you Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, for anyone who was concerned, she was just chewing on this chunk of plastic. Nothing serious. All right, my dog has now happily resumed chewing on a 2x4. That is versus car parts, so I had to intervene. I, where was I? Okay, yeah, so everything's all mounted up. So now I need to get this power steering pulley on the power steering pump. I believe it's a 3 8 bolt. I don't have a bunch of those. I have like a bunch of M10s. I'm not crazy enough to tap this. Uh, so I'm gonna, I don't know. If I press this on, I feel like I'm gonna blow those bearing out in this cheap little piece of junk. Um, so maybe I'll like just pound it on for a bit and then 3 8 bolt, tighten it. Uh, well, regardless, I don't have the bolt now. So it's putting the front end on hold for now. Actually, you know what? I'll go get a belt just so you guys can see what this will look like. All right, so I'm fairly confident I was lied to because I got this 77 inch, 77 inch six rib belt. And sure enough, even with that pulley, maybe I have an enlarged pulley, it doesn't fit. So the, the routing on here goes like alternator, reversed here onto tensioner over there. See, yeah, this is kind of difficult. All right, what else did my dog just come and take? Oh no, that's a bolt. <laughs> Sylvie, I need you to come drop the screwdriver, please. Please. Yep. And she just grabbed it. She's loving the Harbor Freight screwdrivers. All right, back to the belt stuff. So the belt runs around here, around the crank, and then back up to there. There we go, you kind of get a visual for it. Um, where's that pulley? The pulley does mount on here in that reverse direction, kind of similar to that. So obviously it's gonna be up there. But yeah, this belt's a little too tight. I got to ratchet on that thing and tension it all the way over 
It still needed about an inch. I even got string, mapped it, and sure enough, the midpoint of the articulation of the tensioner puts it about 78 inches, not the 77. But that might just be because of my pulley or some other factor I don't have tracked. But, I mean, it could be alternator, I guess. This is sometimes a different size. So I'm back from the hardware store. I went out and got my bolt, and I was able to put it on here. And I got two different bolts, one long one, one one that I'll actually keep in here. The long one was just to get this thing started because it did bottom out after a while. So two bolts, suck that thing right on, no problem. This belt, even at 78 inches, I'm thinking it's a little tight. This tensioner is basically all the way maxed out, and I still had to slip it around here. So it really was a lot of work to get that thing on versus most times you don't have to go the tensioner all the way over. Maybe, maybe the belt will stretch. Maybe I'll have to get a 78 and a half or a 79. Um, with regard to the power steering pump, right now I just have this thing shoved in there just because I felt bad about rotating this thing over um, dry. So it's just looped and it, it was holding liquid. So that's good. Next thing I need to think about is how to actually adapt this to the BMW steering rack. Right now, I'm gonna get a barb to just go from this thread to this hose, just cause this is gonna need to be just a closed up unit cause it's gonna go in and out, in and out probably when I'm doing transmission stuff. So I'll drop it in, but it's gotta get to those lines here, which if I am guessing that's a 16 mil, I think I looked online. Someone in the comments can hopefully correct me. And then this is a 16.5. No, 16 by 1.5, I think. So you need to get some for, sort of adapter to go from this high pressure to that high pressure. The low pressure can just be something you make, like AN or just barbs, or something cheap to go from there to the low pressure. Because the low pressure is just sitting on here. And it's a plastic thing. So I'm not worried about that. But the high pressure, they sell the kits for like $200 to run this set up in an e46 that is absurd 200 dollars, or maybe i'm going to come to define that's actually a fair price for what i'm going to try to do so what i'm thinking is the best course of action get the f body or similar power steering pump fitting and hose so the whole hose that goes with this and then the whole hose that goes with that take them to like a hydraulic place or just a standard like tractor store or heavy equipment store and just get them uh unioned like a hydraulic crimp on that thing maybe that'll work maybe it won't in terms of adapting those two but i i, I can't see myself paying 200 dollars. but that thing's starting to look pretty good so this is where i'm gonna leave this video off in the next one i really wanted to run that try to get this intake today but i just don't have time today the i my schedule is kind of packed it's unfortunate but what I'm gonna try to do is get that new intake on here. And that's gonna come with a bunch of other issues with the injectors and whatnot. So that intake, obviously you're gonna lose your integrated fuel pressure regulator. And then I need to figure out how to adapt the back of these guys, which I had, it's a dash eight to now a dash six. I got a little adapter there. And that'll go right to my dash six that I already have. That works pretty well. I don't know if the other one's gonna work well, but the other one looks really cool and it's gonna match. So much more in store and thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.